Is anybody still awake out there? Seriously. Are, are there people alive after this Monday Night Raw? I, I don't know. I might fall asleep during this fucking review. That's how bad the fucking show was. Let's talk about it. I can sit here in silence for 35 minutes, which I might very well do. I, I, could, I could very well do that, and probably most of you, if not all of you, would watch me and wonder, is this man going to utter a single word for this Monday Night Raw review? Maybe I'll do that. Maybe, maybe, I'll sit here for 35 minutes, and not say one fucking word. When is he going to talk about Monday Night Raw? When is he going to go over the fact that they built towards Class of Champions? When is he going to talk about Rusev coming back? When is he going to talk about the ongoing storyline that which we can see develop? That Mick Foley is eventually going to get fired as the Raw GM. What else happened tonight? The fact that they gave away another pay-per-view quality match for free on Monday Night Raw. The fact that WWE tried to, or I was going to say tried to, they came nowhere close to upstaging the women on SmackDown Live at Backlash last night. Thank you for the review, by the way, guys. 1,400 likes. Where do I begin, guys? Honestly, enough fucking around, enough fun and games. This show fucking sucked cock. Honestly, if you could feel how heavy my eyes are, you could probably see the fucking bags underneath my eyes, man. I am exhausted. I am exhausted. All I wanted to do was fall asleep during Monday Night Raw. But being that, and I'm going to be perfectly honest and upfront with you guys, if I don't do this review, and I don't sit here for about 30 minutes every Monday night, I miss out on at least, I don't know, 40,000, 50,000 views for a Monday Night Raw review, right? I, I, I'm trending. I am in the search engines. When you look up Monday Night Raw, I am actually ahead of WWE on most weeks. Why wouldn't I do a review? Forty to 50,000 views, a couple of hundred subs gained every Monday night. Easy money for me, right? Monetize it, throw a, f a few ads on there, you know? And we're good to go. Why wouldn't I do it? I do it for me. But more importantly, I do it for you. Because I, I know you guys come to me and tell me, JD, your review makes the night. Your review is better than the show. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. But when the show is this bad, it really makes me not want to watch. When the WWE is so illogical in their creative decisions, it makes me frustrated. Vince McMahon wasn't even there tonight. Vince McMahon was not even there tonight. He injured himself in the gym. Vince McMahon, 71 years old, injured himself in the gym. And he wasn't at Monday Night Raw. But he'll be back to work on Wednesday. He's getting surgery tomorrow. He'll be back in the office by Wednesday. Maybe they needed Vince McMahon tonight. I don't think a fucking second coming of Jesus Christ could have saved WWE tonight. I mean, I don't know what their intention was. I mean, they have a fucking pay-per-view to build towards. You'd think they would at least throw something on the television that sticks. No, Monday Night Football's on ABC or ESPN or wherever the fuck this shit's televised. We're going to fucking give you garbage because we know you're not going to watch anyway. I don't know what type of mentality that, that is, man. Seriously. Well, because Monday Night Football's back, does that mean and give you the fucking excuse? Yeah, we're going to put on shit television? No. Why? What about us fans? What about the city of Baltimore? 
Was your intent to fucking put the entire city of fucking Baltimore to sleep tonight? Mission accomplished. Let me call Tom Cruise up. There's no more missions, motherfucker. Seriously. How can you be okay with this fucking garbage on Monday night? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. There'll be some fucking asshole in the comments. There'll be some fucking goon somewhere on my Twitter. Oh, JD, why are you so negative, man? Really? Why am I negative? I, I mean, I don't know what the fuck you guys watched. Unless you're watching a fucking uh, porno and you got fucking Lisa Ann bouncing her fucking tits all over the place. I don't know what the fuck you're watching on a Monday night. I know what I watched. Complete trash. Complete trash. This show was so fucking boring that I had adopted a baby kitten today. And that was all that was on my mind. Sitting pretty nice and cute over my mother's house. I called my mother during the show, right, to check in. Had her on the phone for about 20 minutes. Just checking up on little baby Bailey is what her name is. And yes, I named her after Bailey. WWE superstar, you fucking clowns. If you gotta, if you gotta know, you'll, you'll be seeing a video soon enough of little baby Bailey on the channel. And that was pretty much it. That was my night. That was my night. I could give two shits about Monday Night Raw. Honestly. If you watched last week, there's no reason to watch this this week. It was pretty much rinse and repeat good old WWE. Clash of Champions. I don't know why. They got a pay-per-view coming up, right? Doesn't even feel like a brand-exclusive pay-per-view. They're not making you give a shit about anything on that show. Quite frankly, I don't even give a shit about the WWE Championship now. Or the WWE, the Universal Championship. I'm sorry. Might as well be the fucking WWE Championship. They're treating that motherfucker bigger and better than the WWE Champion has been on SmackDown. Triple H comes back. You think we get some fucking explanation as to what's going on with Triple H and tie up some loose ends and why he's back and why he fucked over both Rollins and Reigns and why he helped Kevin Owens win the championship? Three weeks now. Nothing. Not one iota of an explanation. You don't, you don't think we, we deserve an explanation? We have to wait and we have to fucking grind through shit after shit after shit every week to get to the fucking pay-per-view and still... Don't get an explanation at Clash of Champions. I, I don't know. I mean, am I the only one feeling this way or am I being too critical? <laughs> am I being too critical? No, oh, JD. I have a right to be critical, man. I have a right to be critical. I'm so fucking tired I can't even I can't even raise the tone of my voice. That's how fucking tired I am. This show is half of the reason why I'm fucking dead to the world right now. But I'm still here doing this for you guys. Awful. Absolutely fucking awful. That's all I gotta say about that. Nothing else to talk about. There is one thing I do want to talk about before we get into this pathetic show called Monday Night Raw tonight. Um, apparently some of you were tweeting me that Randy Orton, who was taken off backlash last night due to concussion symptoms, comes out last night, RKO's Bray Wyatt. Okay. The RKO is Bray Wyatt, but he's taken out in the beginning of the show, and they attempt to work on his leg. And his leg is a storyline, as, as his leg is being smashed in between a wall and a door in the locker room. That was that, but he comes out hobbling, still able to RKO Bray Wyatt. Now, I don't know about that, being that he has concussion-like symptoms. I mean, he's still taking an impactful move, correct? Okay, so, I didn't understand that. But then you guys are tweeting me tonight during Monday Night Raw. Yeah, Randy Orton's at a house show with John Cena against Eric Rowan and Bray Wyatt. He's in a legit tag match. He's on the apron waiting for a John Cena hot tag. I thought this guy had concussion syndromes. I thought this guy wasn't cleared to wrestle. So, WWE thought it was a better idea to give us Bray Wyatt versus Kane... On Backlash, but not Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. I, I don't understand that. I, I mean, do, does WWE fucking hate us? Do they hate Bray Wyatt? I, I don't get the logic there. Do, did they not think that Randy Orton was a good enough opponent for Bray Wyatt? 
Were they not going to book Bray Wyatt in a victorious manner on Backlash? I don't, I don't get what the reason is that we got fucking Kane in an all-holes barred match, but Randy Orton's competing tonight somewhere else in the United States for the SmackDown brand at a fucking house show. Don't understand it. Really don't understand the logic there. That's just one of many blunders by WWE tonight, which we'll go over with this Monday Night Raw review, because most of the shit that I've seen tonight literally made no sense. So, Mick Foley is in the ring, and we start off with the fucking women of Monday Night Raw, which I will say this, the women on SmackDown are doing a much better job. And I'm not including Eve Marie in that talk, because... She's done nothing. I mean, it's been a fucking godsend that she's been out due to a drug policy violation. But WWE is making more use of their women on SmackDown than they are on Monday Night Raw. I mean, you got Sasha, Charlotte, and Bayley, and then that's pretty much it. You got Nia Jax beating the shit out of everybody, which doesn't even feel fresh anymore. It just feels like, you know what? Give this woman some legit fucking competition, and enough is enough already. Seriously. Then you got Dana Brooke. Miss Botch herself. Seriously. She doesn't even know how to fucking spell the word wrestle, let alone do it for a fucking living. That's your Monday Night Raw women's division right there in a nutshell. SmackDown's making use of everybody, and after that match at Backlash, I mean, the SmackDown women, minus all red everything, is doing pretty well for itself. Everybody got a nice chance to shine on Backlash. And WWE, seeing this, they tried to attempt to generate some momentum and excitement with their women's division. So after all the fucking blah, 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 she said this, she said that, that's going to be my title. Uh, 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 I'm going to get a title shot. They make a triple threat match with Bailey, Sasha, and then Dana Brooke. We finally seen the relationship between Dana Brooke and Charlotte implode. That is no more. Because Charlotte, like a typical bitch, continued to talk down to Dana until Dana could take no more. And she said, you know what, go fuck yourself. Slapped her in the face. So that was pretty much that. So Dana grew some balls and then actually was placed in a triple threat match via Mick Foley. Three women, one title shot, Clash of Champions. The winner actually goes on to fight Charlotte one-on-one -on -one for the title. Now we see in this match... Go about 12 minutes, and this was, like I said, WWE's attempt to pretty much one-up SmackDown's six-pack challenge, but with three women on Monday Night Raw. They came nowhere close. That six-pack challenge was fucking great, even though we did see a botch here and there. It was still fantastic. All six women got the time to shine, and this was nothing but a pitiful attempt to try and at least match up with the women of SmackDown and what they did at Backlash. They didn't even come close. So Sasha beat Bailey and Dana Brooke with a pin on Bailey that looked, and I understand, it takes one fucking thing, and my Twitter blows up. JD, did you see the double pin? It looked like a double pin, JD. Did you see that, JD? I don't get it. What happened? You're asking me. You're asking me. I don't know if this was supposed to happen, or if this was Sasha Banks botching yet another move. The only thing that Sasha could take to the bank is another botch. She's on par with Dana Brooke about now. I don't know. So I don't know if that was planned. I don't know if Bailey's going to come out next week and say, you know what? Listen, I pinned you, you pinned me. I deserve a match. I don't know what's going to happen. So your guess is as good as mine. But all I know is it looked like both women's shoulders were down on the mat as the referee counted three, but Sasha Banks got the victory. 12 minutes and 14 seconds of... Uh, 12 minutes and 14 seconds, Sasha and Bailey and Dana Brooke, triple threat. Sasha goes on to fight Charlotte like it was already advertised. I mean, they advertised the fucking match during Backlash last night. So she's going on to fight Charlotte for the championship. Yawn, yawn at Clash of the Champions, which I like better. Oh, JD, it's Clash of Champions, man. No, it's Clash of the Champions. That's the way I say it. If you don't like it, get the fuck off my review. Anyway, post-break, then apologizes to Charlotte, but the champ just tells her to get the bags. Okay, go get the bags, you fucking lackey. Shining Stars offer R-Truth a timeshare 
in Puerto Rico. You know, funny how we come on here every single week and say, these guys own fucking property in Puerto Rico. Come to Puerto Rico, where the margaritas are flowing and the fucking tits are fake. And the sand is fucking white and the ocean is blue. And you're the worst fucking tag team in the company. What else do I gotta know about fucking Puerto Rico? Seriously. Shining Stars offer R-Truth a timeshare. You know what? He's better off taking timeshare to get the fuck out of the WWE instead of staying where they are right now in the current state of Monday Night Raw. I, I mean, I would. I, I, I'd fucking immediately hop on fucking the Shining Stars timeshare right now. But it's funny how we always say these guys are nothing but real estate agents and now they're coming out with fucking pamphlets for timeshare. Is WWE really watching my channel? Are they listening to the fucking shit that we say here and they're taking it literally now and actually putting it on the show? Gotta be. I just find that to be the fucking the most bizarre coincidence right about now. I don't know. So Truth says, Yahtzee, Goldust comes in before the payment goes through. And Enzo and Cass are there to say last week's loss was not fair. The fact that the Shining Stars are on my fucking television is not fair to me. So I understand your fucking pain and frustration, Enzo. Spanish is spoken, and I think the challenge is accepted for later on in the show, which it very much was accepted. Spare us. How much is that timeshare going for, Primo? I'll, I'll take you up on the offer. I'll double what our truth is fucking paying for it. Kevin Owens calls Triple H his mentor. Where do we hear that one before? Says Roman Reigns doesn't belong in the same ring as the champ. Tonight he'll make sure Seth Rollins is all alone at Clash of Champions. I feel all alone every time I watch fucking Monday Night Raw because the show is so fucking terrible. I want to fucking hang myself in front of my television every fucking Monday night. Chris Jericho comes in to say he'll be there with Sami Zayn on the highlight reel tonight, even though he's a stupid idiot. I think everybody in Baltimore is a stupid fucking idiot for buying a ticket to this show. Seriously. Bo Dallas versus Brandon Scott. Well, what the fuck do you know? Bo Dallas has a bigger winning streak than Bray Wyatt has ever had. Look at that. And you know why Bo Dallas is on a winning streak. I don't know what happened in China. You know, the reason why he won the first squash match was because he was going against Bin Wang. Seriously. Bin Wang, the WWE star that they saw in from China. So they wanted to make sure Bo Dallas got an impressive victory over a local jobber so that he went into this match with Bing Wang and won. But now he's back this week, and I don't know what the fuck is going on with Bo Dallas. I mean, are they pushing him? Is this guy going to be a threat somewhere down the line? Does WWE value Bo Dallas more than they do Bray Wyatt? It certainly seems like it. He's got more wins consecutively than Bray Wyatt has ever had in three years on the WWE main roster. The fuck is going on right now? I don't understand it, nor will anybody ever understand WWE's logic. Roll of the dice, Bo Dallas wins. And apparently there's footage of Bo Dallas being arrested. This might, this might have been a fucking, a ruse, a troll on Bo Dallas' part. Maybe to get some fucking exposure, to make a name for himself, I don't know. His fucking name's being talked about all week because he got drunk at an airport bar drinking uh, tequila. Maybe. Maybe he went into business for himself and WWE's like, oh, look at this guy. He's a comedic act. This guy got some exposure for himself. Fucking singing the Lion King in fucking Dallas-Fort Worth airports. This guy's funny. This guy's got a personality. Yeah, we'll push him. Can, can you imagine that? Maybe Bray Wyatt should have been joining him. You know? Have a few red deaths. You know, something, uh, something that's really gonna get the fucking blood flowing. Make the fucking hairs on your chest stand up. You know, just have, you know, have a couple of shots, man. You got the four horsemen. You got uh, Jose Cuervo, Jack Daniels, Jameson, right? Johnny Walker. Yeah, the four horsemen right there. Line them up, take them fucking back to back. You'll be good to go. You're right. You'll be on a fucking winning streak just like Bo Dallas. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But Bo Dallas on my television on Monday night, two weeks in a row in, win in winning fashion. I don't know. I must be fucking watching uh, TNA Impact. I don't know. Anyway, Highlight Reel is up here with promises of some hard-hitting journalism. Jericho was excited about the idea of interviewing Kevin Owens, who is so handsome, by the way, that Tom Cruise and or Brad Pitt could play him in their life, sto in their life story movie. Instead, he gets Sami Zayn, who is the lowest of the low. Jericho laughs at Sami for not even having Owens' new phone number, but Sami is amazed that Jericho brought him out here to talk about Owens. Zayn loves the idea that Jericho buys into what Owens says, and he only cares about the Universal title. 
That doesn't fly with Jericho, so he takes credit for Sammy and Owens wanting to be where they are today. Sammy goes into a rant about how it was people like Eddie Guerrero who paved the way for him, and now Jericho, a former world champion, is just Kevin's lackey. Jericho offers to show Sammy a text from Kevin, but breaks his phone over Sammy's head. That was pretty much it, you know? And then after that, WWE says, you know what? Okay, we have this segment. Sammy gets a phone broken over his head. That's good enough to make a match. Two weeks out of a fucking pay-per-view. So it's Sami Zayn versus Chris Jericho for Clash of the Champions. Neither men have a title, right? But the pay-per-view is called Clash of Champions. Makes sense. WWE logic right there. So once that match was announced, I was like, oh my God. The rumors were going around that Jericho and Roman Reigns were going to have a mini feud because Rusev was on his fucking 38-day fucking honeymoon. How many fucking days can fucking Lana go down on Rusev and suck that Bulgarian cock until she gets fucking bored? I mean, give me a breath. A 38-day vacation for a honeymoon? Isn't this guy the United States champion? Doesn't he have a job to do? I mean, put fucking Lana's tits down for a second and go back to work. None of us want Roman Reigns in the main event. Seriously, earn your fucking paycheck, then go to uh, attend to your wife. Honestly, nobody wants to see this shit. Rusev needs to be on TV. He needs to calm the people's nerves. Without him there, we might be fucking floating up shit's creek with Roman Reigns in the fucking main event of Clash of the Champions. Nobody wants that. So after this match was announced with Zayn and Jericho, everybody was like, oh my god, here we go. WWE doing the typical WWE thing. Sucking Roman's Samoan cock and nobody was happy at all everybody collectively sighed disbelief and frustration at the announcement of Sami Zayn versus Jericho hey, it's gonna be a great match doesn't make sense for clash of the champions and we all thought Roman was going to the main event at clash of champions so we just have to wait till the main event Sheamus versus Cesaro nine minutes and 57 seconds another match in which I don't care Go figure, I don't fucking care. I don't know whether Cesaro is fucking wrestling Sheamus or he's auditioning for the remake of The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. I don't know what the fuck is going on with this guy. More and more he comes out dressed as a fucking mummy. Enough with the fucking tape, bro. Seriously, you look ridiculous. And th this best of seven series is fucking ridiculous. I'm so fucking tired of this already. It it's, it's, it's just over. It is over. And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to this, and I'm watching it, and we all see Cesaro clearly making a comeback. The first one wasn't televised, by the way. We all see him making a comeback. Has anybody actually sat down and thought, well, you know, Sheamus is up 3 nothing, right? He needs one win. What is this doing to Sheamus? How do you think Sheamus is going to look coming out of this? Up 3 nothing, and then more than likely... Cesaro's going to win this 4-3. So, okay, you built Sheamus up, and he went up 3-0 on Cesaro. Cesaro's going to end up winning at 4-3. How do you think that's going to make Sheamus look? It's gonna, he's, Sheamus is going to be the biggest fucking bum on this roster, losing a best-of-seven series after being up 3-0. But uh, with WWE, yeah, we're going to get Cesaro over. It's going to get him over, right? Does anybody care at this point? We're fucking five matches in. Of course not. Has anybody thought that far ahead about what this is going to do to Sheamus? Of course not. It's WWE. I gotta be the one to fucking fill you guys in. You're watching me. Oh my god, you know, JD, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that, man. Oh, JD, I didn't think of that, man. Why are you so negative, man? Logic, assholes. Logic. Guarantee you didn't think of that. I thought of it. That's what I was thinking watching this fucking 10-minute bore fest. Sheamus is going to lose four matches. It's going to be a fucking jobber to the stars after this best of seven series. No way you're going to come back and have anybody remotely give a shit about you. Nia Jax versus Alicia Fox. WWE followed up a fucking storyline from last week. Go figure. Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, two minutes. This was a no contest because Nia Jax speared Alicia Fox through the barricade where the old fucking, uh, I believe that's where they sit now anyway, where the timekeeper is and where JoJo sits down, in that little area there where they used to sit next to the three goons on the commentary table. Now two goons, because Corey Graves is nowhere near a goon. But Nia Jax speared Alicia Fox through the barricade, 
And that was pretty much it. Yeah, it gets Nia Jax over. I mean, she pretty much destroyed somewhat of a notable name in the women's division, but it's Alicia Fox. Does anybody give a shit about Alicia Fox? Of course not. Alicia Fox is just better off as the fucking six other jobbers that were fed to her on Monday Night Raw for the past three months. Doesn't matter. So, it made her look good, but I need solid competition. And there's nobody in WWE's women's division on Monday Night Raw because they're all tied up in a circle jerk together. So Nia Jax is going to continue beating jobber after jobber after jobber, and it's not going to do anything. These matches are supposed to get her over as far as moveset goes, as far as showing us what she can do in the ring. Okay, you speared a woman half your size through a barricade. Yeah, you're tough. That's all it says. But she's half your fucking size. I mean, you could fucking eat... Fucking, I don't know, you, you can eat a pound of macaroni and cheese, and you can fucking use uh, Alicia Fox as a fucking toothpick. That's how fucking thin she is. I mean, how is that going to make me say, you know what, Nia Jax is impressive. She wasn't impressed in the fucking six other weeks. She literally destroyed everybody. Doesn't make sense to me. What are people going crazy for? What are they raving about? It was a spear. I sit there and I look at this, I'm like, what the fuck? What are you, what are you people watching? I don't get it. So, Nia Jax, where does she go from here? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Anderson and Gallows versus The New Day. That pay-per-view tag team title match, I will give it away for free. Another fucking dumb-headed move by WWE. New Day comes out before the match and says that they tried to be entertaining. Gallows and Anderson did last week. Xavier Woods says, do not touch our thing. No, I want your sister to touch my thing. That's the, that's the fucking difference there, Xavier Woods. They load up the old day footage, but say there's no way we're showing that again. The skit was so bad that it made everyone lose five minutes and 30 seconds of their lives, and they burned the fucking tape. Truth be said, one of the worst segments of all time on Monday Night Raw in the history of this show. But instead of burning that footage of the old day, I think they should have burned the script in which this fucking feud was written. Because this shit is awful. Gallows and Anderson are fucking terrible. And I don't mean that because I like them. They're being booked in such a way that they are a legit fucking joke. AJ Styles is winning WWE Championships on SmackDown. Anderson and Gallows are nothing but fucking make-believe doctors who wish they were starring in a porno with Dana Brooke. You see the differences there? Do you see the differences there? These two guys came in and they were notable names and people were fucking hyped for them and the Bullet Club infiltrating WWE did. The WWE drop the ball on everybody involved with the Bullet Club except for AJ Styles. These guys have absolutely nothing going for them in WWE because seemingly WWE fucking killed their momentum. And now that we've seen this match on Monday Night Raw, why would I care about this match at the pay-per-view? Unless there's a fucking title change. And the New Day need to drop the titles. Just like Dean Ambrose needed to drop the titles to AJ Styles, New Day needs to drop the fucking titles. I'm not saying the New Day is boring, I'm not saying the New Day is stale, but give Anderson and Gallows some fucking rub in the WWE. Christ, is it that fucking difficult? Throw these guys a bone, man. They came in with so much fucking hype and excitement, and they are nothing but fucking comedy garbage on Monday Night Raw. But they win the match. Magic killer to Xavier Woods. You know, most of the time, you know, next week we'll see the New Day get one over on, on Gallows and Anderson. But if this was before the pay-per-view, if this was the go-home show, more than likely the New Day was going to win. But being that we got one more show until Clash of Champions, one more Raw, I see the New Day getting their revenge next week, and then maybe Gallows and Anderson have a chance at winning the titles, which I hope is the case. But, again, pay-per-view match on free television. Why would I care at the pay-per-view? So they win with a magic kill at 9 minutes and 29 seconds. Jinder Mahal versus Jack Swagger. I was fucking... My jaw hit the floor. Jack Swagger on Monday Night Raw. This is legit first time we've seen Jack Swagger since the brand split. Does anybody care? The crowd, I believe, either left the building or fell asleep. One or the other, you couldn't tell the difference. I mean, there were bodies sitting in the fucking arena, but they weren't moving. They were not moving. It's like they were all fucking comatose in a zombified state. Nobody made a fucking peep. 
You talk about fucking the old lady farting. You can hear that. You can hear a pin drop. Crickets rang throughout the fucking arena tonight in Baltimore. And I don't blame them. Jinder Mahal, Jack Swagger. I mean, am I watching Monday Night Raw? Am I watching a show that's building towards Class of Champions? Or am I watching fucking WWE superstars on the WWE Network? I don't know. I can't tell the difference anymore. But either way, Jack Swagger lost. His first match on Monday Night Raw from the brand split loses to Jinder Mahal, who was brought in specifically to be an enhancement talent. Who's the true enhancement talent, WWE? I beg to differ. Jack Swagger is awful. Then they go on and say, well, well, his WWE Raw contract is coming to an end in a couple of weeks. I mean, what's the difference? He's going to go to SmackDown and do the same fucking thing. I mean, Jack Swagger is so far gone. The guy had such a huge upside when he was world champion, and he was on his way to doing very, very good things in the WWE. And what, what did they do? They, they, they wasted him away. He's munched on nothing but fucking catering with Damian Sandow and Tyler Breeze and everybody else that he's fu fucking become friends with who's never been on television, right? Curtis Axel, Heath Slater, who eventually was promoted to SmackDown and now is a tag team champion, right? He's back there with Sin Cara. He's back there with Braun Strowman, who thankfully we didn't see tonight. This guy is nothing but, but the catering king, bro. They go to him and request, Jack, what do you want for catering, bro? They go through him. He is the catering king. That is his fucking position in WWE. He stands by the catering table. He fucking fills the refreshments for you. Hey, Jack, what do you got? You got, you got fruit punch. You got sugar free. Yeah? I like the blue color, though. I don't like the red one. What do you got? You got salad? Olives? Croutons? Russian? Vinaigrette? I like balsamic, bro. You got balsamic? Yeah, man. Yeah, you got that little shredded cheese you put on the salad? Yeah, man. I love that. What do you got for dessert, bro? Cheesecake? You got that fucking, that devil's cake, that little Debbie shit? Yeah, I'll take that, bro. That's all Jack Swagger does. I don't give a fuck about Jack Swagger. How do you fucking mind? Why is this guy on my television on Monday Night Raw, two weeks before pay-per-view? Honestly, this is a fucking joke. Jinder Mahal. Uh, what else do I got to say about this? Running neck breaker, Jinder Mahal beats Jack Swagger. Yeah, go to SmackDown. You think it's going to help your fucking career? Your career was fucking dead seven years ago. Enzo Amore versus Epic. All these guys start handing out fucking pamphlets for their timeshare. And I kid you not, this is no longer a joke anymore. This is a reality. I'll take one. Please. Enzo versus Epico. What happens? Epico beats Enzo Amore. In a similar fashion to the way Ravishing Rick Rude beat the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 5 when Bobby the Brain Heenan... Not seen by the referee, held the foot of Enzo on the outside, and we got a winner. But in that case, it was Ravishing Rick Rude winning the Intercontinental title. Tonight, it was just Epico beating Enzo Amore, and the team of the Shining Stars got one over on Enzo and Cass for a second week in a row. People are probably wondering, J.D., why is this? Is this leading to an Enzo and Big Cass split? No. No. This is only because Epico and Primo have to fucking pay their timeshare, Right? They got to run their business in Puerto Rico. And if WWE's not using them, they are not making the money to survive down in Puerto Rico. That's all it. That's all it is. You know, these guys are on the payroll. You have to use them. You have to use them. There's no way around it. You know? Enzo and Cass are so over that losing to these fucking scrubs will do nothing. You're getting heat on the shining stars. And Enzo and Big Cass are going to come out when the time is right. When this fucking bullshit feud is over. And... They're going to destroy these guys. They're going to wish they never left their fucking timeshare in Puerto Rico. So Epico right now and Primo getting the one uh, couple of wins over Enzo and Big Cass. That's all it is. You know, you guys know how this is going to end. And thankfully this review is coming to an end because I'm fucking sick to my stomach talking about this show. Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns with the fucking seven commercial interruptions in between. Shit started at 1030 and we didn't get a legit match until about 1047. Go figure. They're just standing there waiting for the fucking commercials to end until the referee says, you know what, ring the bell, let's do it. 23 minutes. Half of it was seen by the live crowd in Baltimore, and half of it was seen by everybody watching at home. But in the end, they trolled us. They trolled us, man. Seth Rollins came out, and Mick Foley was proclaiming to him, do not interfere in this match, or there will be repercussions. There will be repercussions, okay? This was in the middle of the show. I failed to... Uh, go over this, and can you blame me? I, I really don't fucking care. But Seth Rollins says, you know what, Mick, open your eyes. 
Seriously. You know, stop pandering to Stephanie McMahon. And that's all it is. You know, Mick Foley's trying to be the good guy. He's trying to lay down the law and do the right thing. Stephanie McMahon don't give a fuck about Mick Foley. After Holy Foley is done on the WWE Network, so will Mick Foley's positioning as Raw General Manager. That'll, that's going to come to an end. Garen fucking T it. They're going to replace this guy sooner rather than later. So, he's like, don't interfere in the match or there'll be repercussions. What do you think happens? Seth Rollins comes down, he interferes in the match, right? And Roman Reigns is not going to the main event. Fit Finley's out there, WWE officials are out there, they're rushing Seth Rollins to the back. Mick Foley's like, come to the back, don't answer me back, don't talk back to me, I'm, I'm your superior, let's talk about this in the back. Mick Foley says, you know what, that's not the way I want it to end, let's restart the match. So then here we go, you know, WWE teases a Superman punch and a spear here and there, and I'm watching and watching and watching, and I'm like, fucking, just, just get it over with the ready just get it over with already put this guy in the fucking main event. They trolled us so fucking much that Rusev was not there. And I had it in the back of my head that, you know what? Rusev coming out would make sense for two reasons. Number one, they didn't have a match at SummerSlam. Number two, if Rusev does not come out, who is he going to defend the United States Championship against at Clash of the Champions? Are they, are they going to keep Rusev off the pay-per-view? I mean, he is a champion. And if he's not defending the fucking title at Clash of the Champions pay-per-view, it wouldn't make much sense. So thank fucking Christ, Rusev won the hearts of so many WWE fans all across the WWE universe. He comes out, he eats a Superman punch, which in turn distracts Roman Reigns enough to eat a fucking pop-up powerbomb. Roman Reigns loses. Thank fucking Christ we don't have to see him in the main event, because if he was in the main event with Rollins and Owens... Owens was not walking out the WWE Universal Champion. Guarantee. But right now, we got a one-on-one -on -one match. We got Jericho versus Sami Zayn. We got Sasha versus Charlotte. More than likely, we got the Shining Stars versus Enzo and Cass. And now we got Roman Reigns versus Rusev, which I'm sure will be announced next week for the United States Championship. Right? New Day versus Gallows and Anderson. There you go. There you go. That's Monday Night Raw. That is um, Clash of the Champions. Pretty much. That's everything, man. And all in all, terrible fucking show, uneventful show, boring. They knew they were going head-to-head -head with Monday Night Football, and they just did not give two flying fucks. Vince McMahon was injured in the gym. He's like, ah, oh, take the week off, guys. It's all right. It's all right. I'll be back on Wednesday. Awful show. Absolutely awful fucking show. So much illogical fucking bullshit, right? You know, another thing about this main event, before I forget, because... I don't want to leave this review. I don't want to leave this review without mentioning this. More WWE logic for you. We got Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens tonight, but Seth Rollins interferes. Mick Foley stops the match, right? He doesn't want any interference in this match. But Rusev can interfere, but they don't restart the match, though, right? Rusev can interfere, but they don't restart the match. How you write this script and see that glaring and staring right at you? Okay, Rollins is going to interfere, and we're going to stop the match... Rusev is going to interfere, but we'll let it slide. I mean, did Mick Foley not see what happened in the ring when Rusev hit the ring? Or did he just not care? Or did the writers say, you know what? WWE fans are this fucking stupid anyway. They'll never know the difference. Illogical fucking garbage. Monday Night Raw is on levels on what they were doing in 2015, man, before the brand split. This show fucking sucked. In fact, SmackDown is actually becoming my favorite show in the week. Honestly, after Backlash, I am more optimistic about SmackDown than I ever have been. Monday Night Raw, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they need to pick it up and pick it up fast because they are treading 2015-type Monday Night Raws, and that's something you do not want to do. Other than that, SmackDown is an easier show to watch for two hours, man. Again, I, I don't know how many times i got to fucking sound like a broken record, but the commercial after commercial after commercial and the three-hour format is absolutely killing this show. But WWE's making their ad revenue. They got this contract in place till 2019. It's okay, though. It's okay. Kill your show in the process. Kill your show in the process. There might not even be a Monday Night Raw after this fucking deal with NBC Universal comes up because the ratings will be so low that WWE has no choice but to put Monday Night Raw on their network because USA would not want them anymore. But little do they know, USA, in fact, is killing Monday Night Raw. 
That's all I gotta say about that. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you're on iTunes, obviously you guys know what to do. Leave a five star rating. Leave me a comment. Podbean, you guys know what to do. Follow me on there. If you guys are on YouTube, hit the thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. You guys know the deal. I'm uploading this. I'm going the fuck to sleep. I'm exhausted. This Monday Night Raw is nothing but fucking cancer to everybody's eyes and ears. Hopefully SmackDown is better following Backlash, which was a very, very good pay-per-view. And then obviously we have, thank fucking Christ, the CWC Finals two-hour finale on Wednesday. Should be fucking fire. Can't wait for that. Thank you guys so much. If you missed anything that I did previously this weekend, everything you need is down below. Check out the Backlash review if you guys missed that. Until then... I'm JD. I will see you guys later this week with more great WWE content. Talk to you guys later.